Welcome to the Gooder Podcast, where we talk with powerhouse women in CPG about their journeys to success. This episode is sponsored by Retail Voodoo, a brand development firm guiding mission-driven consumer brands to attract new and passionate consumer base, crush their categories through growth and innovation, and magnify their social and environmental impact. If your brand is in need of brand positioning, package design, or marketing activation, we are here to help. You can find more information at www.retail-voodoo.com. Hi, Diana Frank here. I'm the host of The Gooder Podcast, where I talk with the powerhouse women in CPG about their journeys to success. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, this episode is brought to you by Retail Voodoo. We are a brand development firm working with brands that want to change the world. At Retail Voodoo, we build beloved and dominant brands in the food, wellness, beverage, and fitness CPG categories. Anyone from multi, uh, multinational companies like the PepsiCo's and the Starbucks, all the way to startups like High Key and everyone in between. We guide mission-driven consumer brands to attract a broad and passionate fan base, crush their categories through growth and innovation, and magnify their social and environmental impact. We have built a proven process after working with hundreds of brands over the past 30 years. So if you're ready to find a partner that will help your business create high-impact strategy that gives your brand an unfair advantage, Retail Voodoo is here. Just give us a drop us drop by our website if I could ever even think of it, retail voodoo.com, or you can email us at info at retail voodoo.com. So I get to um, introduce, and you guys and I get to, to get to talk with Miss Karen Frame of Makina and uh, just learned about her recently. She is up to some amazing stuff. Karen is a serial entrepreneur including a three, she's in, including being a three-time tech founder with over 25 years as an executive in the software and data industries. We'll talk a little bit about how technology is evolving to connect better for you brand and consumers together. And we're going to talk a little bit about the evolving definitions of better for you brands and naturals as well. So hello, Miss Karen, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, Diana. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. And you're in Boulder today? We're in Boulder. Yeah, our headquarters are out of Boulder, and I actually am lucky enough to live in Boulder. Wow, love Boulder. We just hired a couple people out of Denver, and uh, um, we're pretty excited. Um, we're just kind of sneak peek building a second office location there. I love Colorado, and um, and um, such a great place and a great community of people. Yeah, I'm really lucky. I've been here since 1993. Wow. Before I'm almost a native before school. I know it's very much like Seattle. You can't have been here a native unless you were here before. Uh, I'm not sure before the eighties, I think that, <laughs> that qualifies. Exactly. Well, Hey, before we get into too much of the really good juicy stuff, I always love it when my guests have an opportunity to share a little bit about what they're up to. So I know some big things are happening with Makina. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but maybe you can share what is Makina? What are you up to and and why does it exist? So what is Makina? So we are a free mobile app for a consumer. Oh, okay. Where they can download it from the App Store or Google Play, mm-hmm. um, and they can discover, find, and save, meaning earn cash and rewards like product and swag and all sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> um, after they engage with brands who manufacture products Mm -hmm. that meet either their dietary needs Mm -hmm. or lifestyle preferences. And again, it's no matter where they shop. So Mm. all they have to do is once they buy a product, either online and a thrive market or a Walmart or, or or a Amazon or just a local grocery store or 7-Eleven, they just have to scan this, the UPC, the barcode take a snapshot of the receipt and they earn these cash and rewards. So that's a little bit about what Makina is on the front end Uh to a consumer. Okay. But on the back end, it's a way for the brand and its products to get discovered by consumers. Gotcha. Anywhere they want to distribute it. Okay. 
and they get to engage with the consumer Mm. on a regular basis through our dashboard. Okay. And they get to learn about who that shopper is, right. where they're shopping, mm-hmm. what's in the basket, little habits, a lot, yeah, mm-hmm. a lot about the competition mm-hmm. and how to be more effective and efficient with their marketing dollar. Oh, okay. It's I wanna, a lot. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. I, and we're going to learn a little bit more about why you started it. Cause I think that's important, mm-hmm. but before we do that, as part of your basket of businesses that you, uh, that you're part of and that you're working on, you've got something that you're involved in and you can talk a little bit more about your, how deeply involved you are in it, but plant Ricious, Did I get that right? Plant Plant. <laughs> now you're making me do it. Plant Ricious. Oh, Page is going to kill me. Oh, <laughs> plant Ricious. What is that? It looks like a certification, but it, I, I wasn't yes. sure. And I wanted to hear from the horse's mouth. Yeah, it's a certification. So I've been involved with plant, plant Ricious since 2017. Okay. Um, I met Paige in St. Louis mm-hmm. when we were in an accelerator in St. Louis. Okay. All and right. she started asking me for all sorts of advice. She had this great idea about creating a really clean label for plant based product. Okay. And you can say that you're a vegan or that's all you eat is plant-based. Mm-hmm. But when you really look at the label, <laughs> there's a bunch of other crud in there. Yeah. Sugars, bad oils, mm-hmm. lots of preservatives and yeah. things like that. And what Paige set out to do with Plantricious, and it's backed by over 300 medical professionals. Wow. What she set out to do is create this certification for really uber clean plant-based product. And that's basically how I eat personally. Yeah, yeah. So I, I believed in Paige. I believed in what she was doing. Um, I've been a little bit of a coach along the way. I was asked to be an advisory board member uh-huh. and I'm still a lawyer by trade. So sometimes I do even a little bit of work for her. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we need that, especially with certification processes. I think um, I would love to see that amplified a little bit. And maybe we'll talk a little bit more offline because the brands that we work with, there's a handful that have that pain point and are not quite sure how to communicate it. And that certification could certainly come in handy. Mm-hmm. Well, she would love it. And yes. we can, you know, I'll make introduction. Okay. All right. Well, let's hop back to Makina. Um, big news. Like maybe you could share what the big news was like, this is new um, in the last month, something big has happened. Um, and uh, let's start with that. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, we were selected. Well, we have a couple of really good things happening around Makina, which is okay. getting the word out about us, okay. other than talking with you, of oh, course. You're so <laughs> sweet. Thank you. So um, we were selected out of 2,000 companies plus okay. to do a live pitch with Kevin O'Leary from Shark okay. Tank. All right. And uh, we won. Oh, my <laughs> so goodness. That- Super cool. That's uh, he huge. Loves, yeah. He loves what we're doing. We got a grant from him and um, yeah, we're, you know, we're on our way beyond Kevin and more. I mean, he's, you know, he's pretty harsh as you know, <sighs> on, on Shark Tank, but he was really um, very complimentary, very kind to everybody that pitched quite frankly. Um, so I think that, you know, we probably shouldn't talk about this on a podcast, but I think he's really a nice guy. (laughs) So, so we won that. And then the other thing that's kind of fun is that, and it's not just fun, over 3000 companies worldwide were chosen um, out of over 3000 companies worldwide, 229 companies were chosen for this thing called mass challenge. And it's, it's a worldwide organization that really uh, focuses on helping solve the world's problems mm. through collaboration and innovation. So Makina is part of cohort 50. So um, we're working really hard at making a difference with what yes. we're doing in the lives of many people and the health yes. of our planet. Well, so tell me a little bit about what what's the feedback that you're getting from that part of the industry that has people excited about what you're doing? Like what, what are they giving you? What's the feedback? 
Well, the feedback is that we just need to get the word out. Mm. So uh, we're in the process of raising additional investment. Um, I'm doing a lot of pitches Mm. and that's part of the job as the founder, being the visionary, making sure you have a great team that's all on the same page um, and also pitching to investors. (laughs) So that's what I've been doing a lot of. So the feedback that I'm getting is that, yes, the world needs this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's great. U S and Canada, but let's bring it overseas. Uh, So recently we just spoke with a financial conglomerate in Japan about bringing Makina possibly to Japan. Okay. Um, We did, we did hear something from them today, which they even, you know, we're focused on ESG, you know, we're focused on the environment and sustainability and the health of people and health of the planet, maybe a little bit too narrow for them right now, Okay, but, but soon it won't be. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just got approached by a big group out of Indonesia about taking Makina into Indonesia. Okay. I mean, so we have a lot of really cool things happening and it's being recognized by Kevin O'Leary. It's being recognized by Mass Challenge. It's being recognized by the investors that we're speaking with because they see that this isn't just a trend. I mean, it is a trend, but it's here to stay. And uh, consumers need to really think about what they're putting in and on their bodies. Mm-hmm. And um, and basically, brands need to think about really how they are in the world as a brand. Yeah. You know, so that's kind of, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Well, tell me, how did you get to like, how did you get to this space? Why, why this company? Why now? Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, I'm going to tell you a couple different stories. My, okay. my bigger story is that I grew up on a lake in central Illinois and it was across the street from a cornfield that was sprayed with pesticides every year. Mm. And as a result, everyone in my family got super sick or died. And oh so, yeah, so it's, I know firsthand uh, the importance of what you put both in and on your body. And obviously I'm not alone. 98% of consumers really demand this transparency. Yeah. But I had some other things too that happened in my life, which is kind of interesting how it's kind of all come together. Mm -hmm. When I I was in second grade, so actually I'm going to go back again. I learned how to code. I learned how to code when I was in, when I was four. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Really? Yeah, yeah, really. My dad was a science professor at the university of Illinois. And I learned how to do some simple coding way back when, Mm -hmm. and I'm a woman over 50. Mm. which is, it's very unusual (laughs) that that happened way back when. Um, Then I went to this experimental grade school and I learned social studies, science, mathematics, and education on a touch screen called Play-Doh. Wow. So I got really comfortable with technology at a very young age. Yeah. Then fast forward to second grade, (laughs) my second grade teacher. Fast forward. Yeah. They asked, they asked us to write this book about ourselves. And then there was this chapter in this book that you had to write. um, What did you want to be when you grew up? And I wrote, I wanted to be a lawyer because I wanted to feed all the starving children in Africa. Do not ask me (laughs) where that came from. Whoa. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Fast forward even more. I met my former husband, my first year of law school, and he had been an organic farmer. Wow. So my first year of law school is when I got really turned on to this better for you, better for the planet space. There was a Mm -hmm. teeny little grocery store in Urbana, Mm -hmm. Illinois called Strawberry Fields that Richard and I used to go shopping at every week. And there was always somebody there to help you navigate that sure. retail okay. environment. So I learned about spelt. What do you do with spelt? What's the yeah. homeopathic remedy for a headache? Um, yeah. What? How can you make these substitutes in a recipe where you used to use like white sugar? Yes. And so learned all about it. Um, I became, I went to Oxford that summer, became a vegan because I just couldn't stand the food anymore. Yeah. 
And now I, of course, you know, I love animals. So, you know, I'm more than, you know, it's more than just the fact that I don't like the food anymore. Yeah. I just, (laughs) you know, I feel bad for, you know, they're human. I mean, they're beings, right? Yes. So anyway, so kind of all those experience kind of led to uh, Richard and me actually moving to Boulder, Colorado in 1993. And we went into uh, Wild Oats and we had this problem where we couldn't navigate that natural products retail environment. Mm -hmm. The customer service person wasn't there. We didn't know where to find spelt. Mm -hmm. There were no like offers for any of the products in the store, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so I had this aha moment. Um, Why don't I create these touchscreen kiosk systems, put them in natural product stores to help the consumer navigate the natural products retail environment. Yes. So that was kind of my first foray into what I've created now, which is Makina, but it was called natural interactions. We ended up having a nationwide contract with wild oats, which as you know, is now whole foods and um, Amazon. So we were really early, early, early. Yeah. So I'm passionate about the space to say the least. Yeah. And what, It's just what I think so fascinating for me in that how, because at the time you were doing this, organics was pretty earnest about being a pretty earnest period, end of story, exclamation point highlight. Like, you know, it wasn't until a few years ago when uh, this whole space started to loosen up a little bit and kind of let go of kind of stretch the boundaries, which is our strength and our weakness now, but I digress, but I just, what were some of those? I mean, of course, you're going to probably have those people that are absolutely inspired by it. But what was the feedback at that time with other retailers? They're seeing technology and, you know, things were still produce was still, you know, questionable looking at that time. Uh, the CPG in that space was um, not really yummy. You know, I mean, it was, a, it was an evolving, it was an evolving time and you were either in it cause you believed in it or you were not. And, um, so mm-hmm. I'm just imagining technology coming in. What, what was happening with the other conversations? You, you got, you know, wild oats was all about it. Um, yep. wild was, oats was there all- pushback anywhere else where people thinking this is nuts. What are you doing? Well, we, you know, wild oats was our first contract. And um, super interesting because Kroger flew out to meet with us. So same with Safeway. Yep. Okay. And we were talking with GNC, Boney's, Mm -hmm. Mother's, uh, Whole Foods, early, Mm -hmm. early discussions with Whole Foods. So Mm -hmm. it wasn't that any of the retailers felt like this wasn't a really great fit for what they were planning on doing. Uh Um, Wild Oats was already there right? Alfalfa's was already there. Yeah. Um, But our first contract was with Wild Oats. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting because we started going to um, Expo East and Expo West trade shows back in 1994. I know super early, right? Oh my gosh. Was it like the size of a ballroom? Was it? It was. (laughs) And I have some really cool photos to share with you. You do? Oh my gosh. I have a scrapbook. It's so crazy. Um, But one of the things, I mean, the the industry was just still sort of nascent at the time. Steve yeah. Demos was, you know, creating his white wave, yes. you know, tofu. Um, the the guys that founded Horizon were, you know, Mark and Barney were still kind of mm-hmm. trying to figure that out. Lumberg Farms had been a, around for a while. Mm-hmm. But we started selling and and we were very fortunate because we're out of Boulder, Colorado, where yeah. a lot of that industry kind of bloomed mm-hmm. is probably the best way you can say it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Haas Hassan had started uh, Alfalfa's, of course, already. Um, and it's so sad. Alfalfa's just totally closed all over the place now. It's gone. Mm-hmm. I mean, it had underchanged hands a number of times, Wild Oats bought it, then Whole Foods, and then became Alfalfa's again. And then I think a private equity group 
bought them and now it's gone. And that was the end of it. Yeah. That's the end of it. But yeah, the industry was super exciting. Yes. It was like a ballroom at the time that we went to the first expo shows um, and people were super excited. We actually shipped out our kiosk. Oh, you did. Um, yeah, we did. I mean, it's crazy. And we got so much excitement about what we were doing and how we were doing it and how we were trying to educate the consumer. We had like, I'm probably going into too much detail here, but like 12 different modules within the system, Okay, everything from health notes, like we integrated health notes mm-hmm. into it. So again, what's the homeopathic remedy for headache? Mm-hmm to um, what are all of the recipes that you can make for a week and where are the ingredients that you can find for those recipes for the week in the grocery Mm -hmm. store that you're in. Mm -hmm. So you had an aisle by aisle shopping list. We built the first wild shopper card. So it was basically one of the first loyalty programs in the natural products industry. Uh, We spit out you know, little coupons that you could take with you to the cash register Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you got free products. So we, and then we supported nonprofits. We supported the nature conservancy and other not-for-profits that were trying to make a difference in the world. So, so lots of things there, but what happened was um, when we shut that down and it's a long story, I won't go into detail because we only have like another, you know, 20, five minutes or so. Um, but when we shut it down, I ended up, I had already been a lawyer. Um, I, I had sat on a, um, steering committee. It was called, mm-hmm. um, for business for social responsibility. Okay. And I got asked by one of my, um, fellow steering committee members to, um, if I was interested in, in going in house with a technology company. And so I ended up becoming um, a general counsel of a bunch of software and data companies. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did for a number of years from basically, um, I went in-house again in 1999, 2000, and I really kind of left it when I had my aha moment around Nikina. Okay. And I was asked to teach uh, at the University of Illinois because I had some experience being an entrepreneur. I taught in the entrepreneurship program there. And I was listening to a colleague talk about exchanging textbooks with a mobile device. And I was like, that's what I need to do. I need to take natural interactions, bring it into the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a handheld kiosk. Yes. Mobile device. We don't have to focus on retailers now. We can focus on the brand. We can focus on the manufacturer. Yes. We can focus on what they're doing and getting their products. Yeah into the hands of consumers, Yes, no matter where they shop. So yeah. that's kind of the rest of the story. It's a lot. It's a lot. Well, th- tell us a little about where this entrepreneurial spirit comes from. I mean, there's a lot of, and then, then, then I did this and then I started this and <laughs> is that just innate? You know, I don't, I don't really think it is. It's kind oh. of, strange. <laughs> maybe it is, maybe it's not. I think it's a little bit of that you know, a little bit of the DNA, but a lot of the environment in my case, at least my dad was a science professor. And I think, you know, his early education of me created this curiosity and, and trying to make the world a better place. So, and, and he was all about education. So I think part of what I am and why we've created Nikina is because of that education and trying to make the world a better place, Mm -hmm. um, healthier lives on a cleaner planet. We say a lot. Um, the other part is my mom's creativity. My mom was an artist. Okay. Um, she got her degree from Boston university when dad was finishing up his PhD at Harvard. And she was all into like, you know, again, making things better for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, being creative about it. Yes. So who, who knew that I would have been a founder? (laughs) There you go. Well, I, and I think it's so in my personal opinion, science and art are actually quite complementary because we, we learn how to take risk because risk is what gives us the outcomes that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I find them so complimentary how, how, how awesome it was to have two parents that were left and right brain risk takers that probably helps 
you analyze situations and go, I mean, we'll use calculated risk, right? I mean, but your definition of calculated risk is probably going to look a lot different than others, but you see the white space because that's just probably how you grew up. You saw that's what you looked for. You didn't look for what was safe. You looked for what was not even there. I think you're probably right. I didn't really, I've never really thought of it that way. I mean, remember I've been trained yeah. first as an accountant. Oh, oh my, so the extreme opposite. The extreme opposite. <laughs> I got my degree in business and accounting from Indiana university. Okay. And then I took a year and worked as a consultant, financial litigation consultant in Chicago. Oh my goodness. And then went back to law school and, um, you know, I always knew that I wanted to make the world a better place. Yeah. I just wasn't sure how I was going to do it. Um, I had been a prosecutor and I was the head of a domestic violence unit and it was mm. hard work. Yeah. Not saying that building a company is not hard work, but, um, you know, there's other ways to make a difference in the lives of many. Um, yes. You know, there are a lot of people doing a lot of incredible things in this world. Um there's been a lot in the news about all the bad stuff, but mm-hmm. there's so much good stuff. Yeah. Well, and this is your contribution today. I mean, I suspect there'll be a few more in the future. I hope. And, yes. and speaking of that, you know, as this person that's kind of created magic over and over again, I'm, do you feel like there's mm, it's not like a process, but do you know where those hurdles are? Do you kind of go, yeah. okay this part's going to be harder than this part. I'm going to be ready for that. Or is, does every opportunity kind of literally bring its own unique matrix of hurdles that you have to bob and weave around? Yeah, that's a really good question too. Um, I have to say that I don't think I knew what I was getting into (laughs) with any of the, so I've actually been the founder of three companies. This is my third, Um, but I've been, you know, a lawyer, a general counsel Mm -hmm. for other startup companies. And I used to teach entrepreneurship. And I think now if I went back and taught entrepreneurship at the University of Colorado, I would be a much better teacher. More time on the ground. Yeah, much more time on the ground. I mean, the first two companies were really hard too. Mm -hmm. I, but those were in the nineties. And now we're talking about, you know, the 2020s. Yes. And it, with a new set of challenges. I see. Right? Yep. You know, COVID's been huge. Um, but I think in a sense, it's helped people on this planet really understand that their health is really, really important. And what they do um, to, to feed themselves, right? So yes. that they can fight off viruses like COVID yes. yeah. period. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah. And fight them off. You're right. Well, so coming back to Makina, what, what is the goal? What is not the goal? What's the future look like, or what do you hope the future looks like? What is it that you're wanting to tackle next with it? And what are you pointing it towards? Yeah. So, so one thing uh, we're rewriting the app. Okay. So I'm super excited about that. Okay. Um, we're doing a refresh with our branding. So if you look at our website, great. we have some really beautiful branding. We worked with a great husband wife team last oh, year to create this awesome, you know, fresh look and feel. So we're going to be doing that with the app. Uh, we're okay. going to be fixing some things that are a little buggy. So yeah. those of you that are going to download it, don't despair. <laughs> it's going to be super cool. Uh, we have a very long product roadmap, um, okay. everything from more machine learning, more um, okay. artificial intelligence we're building mm-hmm. in, more mm-hmm. augmented reality, Okay, um, some really cool stuff. Um, look for that. Um, okay. Not this year, because the rebuild of the app is going to be beginning okay. of Q4. I think I could say that okay. very confident, uh, confident. Confidently. I can't there talk. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of like, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, look for it next year. Okay. We'll start doing some really cool things. Uh, we're definitely building more gamification 
okay. into the platform. Uh, we have some interesting things down the road for that. We did a very soft launch. We're in the United States. We did a very soft launch in Canada, Oh, um, but we're going to be going all over the place, all over the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, the data that we're collecting, which is zero party data, obviously can't be shared right. all over the world because right. of data privacy laws. But in the U.S. and um, in certain parts of uh, Europe and Canada, we are GDPR compliant and CCPA compliant. Okay. So those consumers have actually opted in opted to Makina. In. Um, but we expect Makina to really become, let's just look four or five years out in the road here, um, be really worldwide making a real difference in the health of many people, hundreds of millions of people. And um, hopefully the, you know, what planet earth, what we're doing with planet earth, quite frankly, are we using recycled materials? Are the brands that we're supporting with our dollar, are they uh, being thoughtful about the, um, the, 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 in, I don't want to just say ingredients, but yeah. what they're, the materials they're using for their products, yes. how they're manufacturing yes. their products. Are they, are they employing fair trade practices? Yes. Are they certified organic? Yes. Um, have they do, have they implemented sustainable packaging? Is it compostable? Yeah. How are they making yes. their product? What are they contributing yeah. back to society? Are they making a positive impact on the world? Yeah. So anyway, that's what I can see Makina doing. And okay. we're a certified B Corp, which is hard to get. Yes, I know we are, we're a B Corp as well. So yay. Yay. Nice job. And we're going to be doing more and more measuring around that oh, and really wonderful. see, you know, what is the impact that Makina is making mm-hmm. in real units. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to be figuring that out a lot better. I mean, right now we're just at the MVP stage and we're sure. onboarding brands. We're getting the word out to consumers. Yeah. Um, but I could see Makina becoming a healthy household name. That would be fantastic. And as I hear you talking about what you're doing, there are seem to be um, individual apps that are doing a component here and a component there of what you're talking about. And to have this one-stop shop dashboard app that um, can help people make those informed decisions about the brands that they're working with um, or that they want to buy from or working with, frankly. I mean, retailers are probably want to have that app there's, you know, probably a whole back end dashboard that would allow them to kind of go, well, what are these retailers doing? And what are these brands doing? A similar dashboard would be fantastic if it's not already um, yeah. put in there. And brokers and distributors yes, yes, and yes. agencies yes. and large manufacturers like Pepsi and Coca-Cola yes. and yes. General Mills. And awesome. what companies are we going to buy next? Which ones are really... Yeah. Um, coming off the shelf, either yeah. online or at the store, mm-hmm. who's being most efficient mm-hmm. and effective with their marketing mm-hmm. dollar? Mm-hmm. And those are questions that Makina can help answer. Yeah, I can see some, I can see uh, my, now my head is spinning. I might, <laughs> I'll have to talk to you offline. Cause I'm like, well, there's some functionality that brand developers could use too, yeah. or yeah. just have access to, but I, yep. I digress. That's another conversation over wine. If you're still drinking wine, are you still drinking wine? Uh, well, once a week I can. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll make that happen. I do want to add one other thing. Um, yeah. So Bikina is not just cash and rewards. I mean, the rewards for continuing to buy product from for sure. the manufacturer, but we have surveys, we have polls. Okay. We have taking a snapshot of the display in the store. Mm-hmm. We have video, we mm-hmm. have recipes. Yes. We have lots of different ways for the consumer to engage with the brand. So instead of going to one provider and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars with that provider or right. vendor. Yeah. The brand can come to Makina and get it all wrapped into one. Love it. That was it. the whole purpose of what we built. Love it. That's so great. Well, 
Um, our time is coming up to an end, but I have a, a few questions that I like to ask everybody that are a little bit of a zag of what we've been talking about. Um, first of all, I love it when a guest can kind of give, um, I call it a happy hour factoid, or just a, like a little interesting fact about the industry. And it could be from your POV, from a data and technology standpoint, or it could be about you've been in the naturals industry for a while. Uh, we had Cynthia Tice on um, a f- several, ep- many episodes ago now, and she pulled out some fact from like the um, early eighties. Cause if you know her, she's been doing natural since the late seventies. And um, anyways, it's, so do you have an interesting fact that you can share with us all? Wow. Um, you know, I remember meeting a lot of the early um, innovators in this space, mm-hmm. um, obviously back in the 1990s in Boulder, you know, Libby Cook, Mike Gillian, uh, the founders of Wild Oats went on to found Sunflower after that, got acquired by Sprouts. Um, I think Mike went on to help build Lucky's markets. Oh, wow. You know, that's changed a little bit. Libby yeah. is very into philanthropy and very mm-hmm. much still into um, natural. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can talk about natural later. Um, well, we're running out of time, so we won't be talking <laughs> about natural later. But, you know, I remember meeting Steve Demos. I remember meeting um, um, Doug Green. Um, so lots of really cool um, visionaries in the space, um, and going to the trade shows and meeting, you know, the founders of, um, Bragg's and Dr. Bronner's, I mean, the brands that are just iconic, um, in the natural products industry. So, you know, I would say those are sort of a little bit, um, you know, I would say more memories, not necessarily factors. Does that help a little bit? (laughs) Oh, of of course. I think, color, Um, you know, we forget that those brands were started by people in their garages, you know, way back. And they still are, don't get me wrong. They still are, but with so much tech money coming into our industry and with the definition of natural and healthy kind of stretching a little bit, uh, it's a little bit, in some ways it's more inclusive, right? Because we still Mm want to make sure that we can start to reach out to those people that are eating completely unhealthy diets and making a switch from a fried and a soda product all the way to a kale chip is a big leap in a short period of time. So in some ways I like that the boundary is stretching. I just wish the language would be reflective of the stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but it's fun to kind of go, oh, yeah, Dr. Bronner's. Oh yeah. And, um, all of them, all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So are there any women that you would like to, that are in naturals in any way, shape or form that you feel like that you watch that you're particularly fond of that maybe could use a little bit of a spotlight in this moment that you're like, yeah, this person is doing amazing stuff over here. Well, if you, if you've never spoken with Robin O'Brien, uh-huh. I would really suggest you speak with her. Okay. She, she was instrumental. She's actually out of Boulder, Colorado as well. Okay. Um, she's instrumental in, you know, the, all the, the free froms, you know, yes. she's got a very interesting story about, um, you know, her children and, and some of them having some significant allergy mm-hmm. reactions. Mm-hmm. And so she kind of started off in the space that way. Okay. And she's become a huge proponent of, um, you know, regenerating the soil, mm-hmm. um, funding those kinds of activities. Mm-hmm. Um, she's very outspoken. Uh, she's got a huge following. I admire her tremendously for her being very strong Mm -hmm. and steadfast in what Mm -hmm. she's doing. Um, So she would be, you know, just a phenomenal guest. Oh, okay. I think that you could interview. Um, So yeah, I'm going to just talk about, you know, Robin O'Brien. Okay. She sounds a lot like Jane Pinto. Do you know, Jane? Similar concept. Yeah. And, and there's an, you know, there are other people too. I mean, You know, another person that is just really rocking it is Jamie Schmidt. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I'm going to meet her um, She's everywhere. On, yeah. On the 18th. Mm-hmm. I'm actually supposed to talk with her about Makina on Clubhouse. Okay. So I'm super excited about That'll that. That'll be fun. 
she's founded um you know a vc firm now with her okay. big, big sale so she you know she got out there and she did it and she was gritty and yes. you know huge success and i think the successes of women in our space are not necessarily celebrated enough yes yeah well, well you and i are changing that today so we'll just give her a shout out right now right jamie yeah You're doing great stuff <laughs> And then my last question for you is what brand, what brand, or maybe what trends are you seeing in natural that you're particularly interested in? What are you following? Yeah. So, so, um, so personally I love, and, and it's trending too, um, uh, pet sustainability. Okay. So, um, we signed, Nikina signed a deal with the pet sustainability coalition, Okay. Uh, uh, earlier this year mm-hmm. and, uh, God willing, we're going to go to super zoo. <laughs> <gasps> That's in Florida, right? No, it's in Vegas. Oh yes. <laughs> right. That's in Vegas. Just right. in a couple of weeks. And I, you know, who knows, little, but, yeah. but anyway, I'm very, very excited about that industry taking the steps that they're taking yes. toward better products, uh, for pets and beyond. Yes. Yes. And um, really thinking about not just about, you know, what you're putting in or on Mm -hmm. your pet or other animals, but um, how you're producing those products. Yes. So kind of same thing that the natural products industry has been doing for a while, but yeah, and we want to promote that. So we got, we have some really cool brands that um, are on our platform already, like I and Levin you, but we're getting a bunch of other ones that yes. have already said yes, but they haven't onboarded yet. Um, we're looking at that trend. Um, there's a lot in the beauty space. So Makina is not just about food and beverage, right. Right. we're pet, we're supplements, the we're whole wellness. It's the whole lifestyle, right? Beauty. Yes, you got it. Um, clothing, like bamboo clothing, yes. recycled clothing, love that office products. So anyway, there's a lot out there and there's a lot for us to do. We are not going to get bored. No, <laughs> it, it, the ginormous aggregator. This is going to be great. Yes. Pets has been trending for so long. Uh, we worked on a few pet brands. Um, oh, Zesty Paws being the, the biggest one that we worked on that is uh, h- hard into the supplement side specifically. So much there um, designed to help extend our friends' lives. It's pretty great. It's really great. Well, I, listen, we've been talking with Miss Karen Frame, who is the founder and CEO of Makina. Also, I'm going to just throw this in because I'm really excited about Plantricious. I don't know why, just maybe I just like the name, but uh, Makina is Karen's baby. Karen, where can people learn more about you and what you're up to? So we have, um, we have all sorts of channels. Um, you can learn about Makina just by going to our Makina website. Okay. It's just M A K E E N A.com. Okay. We have, if you're a brand and you're interested in getting a demo, you it's a little hidden, but it's Makina.com forward slash brands hyphen join us. Okay. And you'll be taken straight to the brand landing page. If you're a retailer, we're happy to talk with you as well, or a distributor or, you know, a broker, lots yeah. of different ways we can wait, work with any one of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, we have Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, okay. we just launched, which is okay. kind of fun. Um, Facebook, you know, all the different channels, Twitter, um, but you can also just reach out to me. I'm very, very much an open book. You can send me an email. You can find us on LinkedIn, follow McKenna on LinkedIn. You can get, you know, interesting tidbits about the industry, some articles, some wins that we've yeah. had, some of the brands that are coming on board. Sometimes we highlight those um, great, better for you, better for the planet brands. And yeah, just reach out to me by email, even okay. Karen.frame at McKenna.com. All right. Well, Miss Karen, I want to thank you so much for your time today and for all that you have done and continue to do for 
consumers and, and the better for you community, the naturals community. It's such a joy talking with you today. It was really a delight, Diana. Oh, thank you so much. And we'll talk to you all soon. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you haven't already, be sure to click subscribe and share with your network. Until next time, be well and do gooder.